welcome to komundur group of schools online classes yesterday we covered this topic in a video form now today in a presentation form we are going to learn let us start the topic with life under the jar so yesterday we covered the same topic as russian society or as well as russian revolution let us see how the society exist during the period of tsar tsar is nothing but a king in russia called as a tsar so let us see what kind of hardships the russians suffered under the leadership of tsar the last tsar of russia nicholas ii most people in russia were poor peasants called serfs serfs nothing but bonded laborers who lived on land owned by wealthy land owners students protest because of not providing proper education peasant revolted against feudal lords and worker strikes were common during his period and the russo japanese war which occurred in 1905 humiliated defeat for russia and showed that tsarist rule was weak and disorganized even though japan a small country unfortunately it defeated russia and occupied some of the places belongs to russia so with this and nicholas ii foreign policy exhibited as weak and weak then after world war 1 started and unfortunately the world war 1 before it was a war between two countries already we came to know that is between austria and bosnia unfortunately nicholas ii to maintain his international prestige he extended his support to bosnia and after this other countries in europe extended their support to each other and unfortunate a war between two countries had turned into world war 1 so unnecessary involvement of russian military in world war 1 caused huge to the execute of uh, russia so let us see what kind of problems faced by the russians during world war 1 and it brought shortages in housing food and uh, fuel Russian armies were ill equipped and were soundly defeated 1.7 million killed and 5 million injured in this world war 1 then they started during his period two revolutions already we discussed in 1905 a bloody sunday revolution happened then after two early years during the world war 1 period and all section of the people in the society they started a revolt against nicholas ii this is what we called as a march revolution and march revolution or february revolution yesterday we discussed what is the difference of march revolution or february revolution 13 days difference is there for julian calendar and gregorian calendar up to 1919 russia a tradition of following julian calendar due to which 13 days difference is showing in gregorian calendar so let us see what are the problems faced by the people during the tsar rule so bread raids so bread raids means food shortages happened in russia so in order to get this bread all section of the people in the country they come on to the roads and they started to demand the government to provide proper food even soldiers sent to end the white protest side with the demonstrators actually soldiers were sent to suppress this protest but uh, surprisingly soldiers changed their mind setup and they also joined along with the protesters and jar nicholas who have no other way is forced to resign or abdicate he was forced to step down from the throne and this is popularly we called as an 
bloodless revolution the bloodless revolution already we come across in ninth class that is in britain a revolution taken place without shedding any blood such kind of revolution again we can see in russia during the period of nicholas ii and after this step down of nicholas ii and a provisional government was set up under the leadership of kerensky who belongs to a provincial government so this kerensky after coming to the power he was asked to withdraw russia from the world war 1 but unfortunately after coming to the power kerensky changed his mind set up and he asked russia to continue in the war and during his period again one more revolution happened that revolution popularly called as november revolution or sometimes we called as an bolshevik revolution because bolshevik party played an important role in dethroning this kerensky from the power and this bolshevik revolution was led by lenin a great popular leader in russia so again during nicholas II, this kerensky period wages increased between revolutions huge wages increased and due to which the industrialists are unable to pay wages to the laborers and the cost of food and other necessities increased at higher rate and the same are unable for the ordinary people to purchase on an average food increased in price 556% or 51% more than wages on an average the above categories of necessities increased about 1109% in price more than twice the increase of salaries so then during this situation bolsheviks they come forward under the leadership of lenin and finally they hatched a revolution against kerensky and he was forced to step down from the power so then after removal of nicholas ii the political turmoil again continue in russia let us see a civil war broke out in russia between reds and whites and bolsheviks prevailed through sheer brutality even when out numbered vladimir lenin led the revolution based upon his own interpretations of the writings of karl marx we all know that one karl marx the founder of communism or sometimes called as an father of communism and lenin signs treaty of breslovsk breslovsk a place located in russia where it signed a treaty with uh, germany so after signing a treaty with uh, germany russia withdrew from the world war 1 then after withdrawal from the world war 1 russia was freed uh, from this force but unfortunately even though russia withdrew from the world war 1 but internal political turmoil started that is in the form of a civil war and this bolsheviks were opposed by supporters of a old regime regime in sense means rule leading to a civil war between whites and reds so civil war is nothing but internal war between two groups within the country popularly we called as a civil war here two groups popularly whites and reds whites means uh, whites a group which was extended support by white countries especially usa britain france japan like such countries they extended their support to this white army and they asked to give preference for democratic type of government or capitalist type of government and reds reds means uh, who are supporters of communist so reds were supported by lenin and whites uh, get support from outside especially from britain france like countries 
This civil war continued for more than two years and uh, each cost more value to this uh, Russian executive. So some thousands of people died on both sides uh, before the completion of the civil war. So both sides indulged in massacres. Massacres is nothing but of killing of their opponents including civilians. Civilians means uh, general public. Lenin imposed war communism and civil war ravaged the economy leading to famine in 1921. Civil war finished in 1921 with the defeat of whites. Soviet Union was established on December 29, 1922 by Treaty of uh, Creation of USSR. USSR means Union of Soviet Socialist Republics and which constitute more than 15 countries. This USSR continued up to 1991 before the disintegration. Lenin brought in new economic policy for the development of Russian economy. So Lenin died in 1924 leading to succession battle in party. Succession battle in sense means uh, who want to overcome this Lenin to the Russian government. But fortunately, Stalin, one of the disciples of Lenin, and he was able to overcome Lenin and finally he occupied power. Let us see how Joseph Stalin, simple biography. So, Joseph Stalin, he came to power and after the death of uh, Lenin. So, born as uh, Losif Vissarinovich uh, Jugarbili and uh, simple we called as an Joseph Stalin. He rose to power as General Secretary of the Communist Party in Russia and later become a Soviet dictator from 1924 to almost all 1944 before the end of World War II. He ruled for more than two decades and instituting a reign of death. Reign means rule of death and terror. Already we hear this word reign of terror which was established by Robespierre in France while modernizing Russia and helping to defeat Nazism. Nazism a popular policy or ideology that was established by Hitler in Germany. Let us see the quick facts uh, about uh, Stalin. Stalin, he born in a peasant village, went to seminary school and he sent millions to labor camps. Uh, labor camps means uh, just like in a forced labor where that labor was used in constructing of industries and other kinds of infrastructure development. And we all know that one, he introduced two famous policies that is collectivization and another one is uh, industrialization. So collectivized agriculture resulted in mass famine. Then he also associated with uh, killing indirectly and directly of uh, 20 million deaths. So this is the simple story of uh, Stalin who came to power. After coming to the power and he introduced some economic policies for the development of Russia. So the most important economic policies that is collectivization. Already we discussed what is this collectivization. Collectivization is nothing but bringing all scales of land, all scales here in sense means uh, large scale land, medium scale land and small scale land pulling together and forced the labor to cultivate the agriculture. After cultivation, whatever yield comes, that yield will be distributed equally among the farmers. In this situation, there is no inequality of uh, big farmer or average farmer or low farmer or will be treated at par on equal basis. Let us discuss 
what are the other factors that include in this calculation. So Stalin's economic policies had one essential aim, the modernization. Modernization means on the lines of Britain or France or Germany, he want to bring some modern methods in the Russian society, which including militarization. Militarization is nothing but increasing of uh, military strength of uh, Russia, both the soldier and as well as uh, weaponry. So of the USSR and two essential methods he followed, one is collectivization, just to discuss it, and another one is industrialization. Industrialization is nothing but increasing or establishing more number of basic goods industries, especially iron and steel industry and shipbuilding industry, like such industries uh, they plan to establish because these industries are more vital in the economic development of any country. Then afterwards, his economic policies were for what was called the second revolution or sometimes called the Stalin revolution or sometimes called Stalin's revolution from above. Then after this collectivization and industrialization, he introduced one more policy that is called the five-year plan. So Russia was the first country in the world that introduced five-year plan program. Five-year plan is nothing but for every one five-year plan, they prescribed one objective or few objectives. To attain these objectives, they allocate resource. One is monetary resource, another one is material resource. So by combining this monetary and material resource, uh, they plan to achieve the prescribed objectives. For example, first five-year plan, if they prescribe agriculture, so for the development of agriculture, whatever the resources available in the country, they pool these resources and allocate these resources for the development of agriculture. Likewise, industries, for the development of industries, whatever the source is there, that is technology, human resource, material resource, and as well as mineral resource, like these resources, they bring together and they use these resources for the development of industries. Like such kind of uh, strategies or objectives they may prescribe earlier and they may plan to allocate the resources for the development of these uh, objectives. Let us see the economy of the USSR where a series of nationwide centralized exercise. Centralized in sense means uh, all powers were kept uh, under the control of uh, a single person or in the union government. Uh, even though there exist Soviets uh, or what we call as in local governments, but entire power lies in the hands of a single ruler. Even today also the same tradition or custom is running in Russia. So rapid economic development in the Soviet Union. The initial five-year plans were created to serve in the rapid industrialization of the Soviet Union. As a part of this rapid industrialization, one such huge iron steel industry was constructed at Magnetors, a place located in Siberia. So this Magnetors surrounding is very hot climatic condition, where during the winter period, the temperature receded to minus 40 to minus 50 degrees. Under this hardship or inhospitable climatic condition, the laborers worked strenuously and finally they completed this iron and steel industry at Magnetors. Like such huge tasks were taken by Stalin in developing this industrialization. Altogether, there were 13 five-year plans. Each five-year plan dealt with all aspects of development. However, the emphasis varied from plan to plan. So this is the story how this Stalin, after coming to the power, and he made most wonders for the development of Russia. So let us make a list once economic policies. Collectivization of Stalin's economic policies had one essential aim, 
the modernization already we discussed that is nothing but including of militarization are the two essential methods for the development of russian society along with this stalin also introduced so many economic policies and these economic policies popularized as well as unpopularized the stalin to some extent so stalin's economic policies is the outcome of uh, opportunism or planning some historians uh, blamed him he used this uh, economic policies for his personal reputation not for the country's uh, development at first uh, he seemed not committed to any specific ideas or ideology supported the right uh, pro NEP. NEP means uh, new economic policies, uh, gradual move to defeat the left. Left in sense means uh, anti NEP. Those who are refusing this new economic policy. Okay, let us see the major causes of Great Depression. Already we discussed uh, the causes of depression and. how the depression happened in america so just to recapitulate once the major causes of depression so first cause is high tariff barriers tariff in sense means uh, duties which are levied either on exports or imports that is called high tariff barriers barriers means nothing but obstacles and next one is uh, stock market crash this is the major thing stock market crash which historians believe the root cause for the occurrence of great depression and over production america unfortunately involved in producing more production that is industrial production as well as agriculture production due to which uh, the prices of the goods uh, gradually decline and next one is uh, inequality inequality in sense means uh, in a social angle there is a lot of uh, gap between rich and poor such inequality also led to the outbreak of great depression and next one is monetary policy unfortunately the monetary policy which they adopted is not that congenial for the smooth running of its uh, economy let us see some other factors some other factors that led to the outbreak of uh, great depression generally historians believe that one in the 1929 stock market crash 1929 stock market crash uh, is uh, main cause for the outbreak of uh, great depression so this is happened on october 29 which is considered as in black tuesday in the history of uh, usa and according to one estimation nearly 16.4 million shares uh, were sold on that day the prices uh, plummeted almost all uh, crashed down and due to which uh, some millions of people uh, become poor and thousands of people committed suicide so that's why historians uh, consider this black tuesday is the most responsible for the outbreak of uh, great depression in the another picture we can see wall street lays an egg that means uh, stock market crash uh, triggers uh, depression and to in order to overcome the problem of uh, depression uh, franklin d roosevelt uh, in 1932 he came to power and uh, he designed some economic policies uh, to recover usa from the outfall of this uh, economy we will discuss let us see what are the hardships uh, the people faced during the period of uh, depression so during the period of depression some millions of people become homeless uh, and uh, suffered with uh, hunger and access across the country the people lost their jobs uh, and uh, their homes due to which they become homeless and unemployment some bill bolsheviks rickshaws out of scrap material 
and before long whole shanty towns uh, sometimes called as in Hoover Willis who were the previous president of Roosevelt uh, because of him this great depression happened that is the belief of uh, USA people or uh, historians so in the nickname the such kind of towns we called as in Hoover Willis and next let us see the recovery steps adopted by Roosevelt for the development of USA. So after coming to the power and he followed a new policy which is popularly called as a New Deal policy. Sometimes this New Deal policy also called as an open door policy. Yesterday as we discussed previous presidents especially who were after coming to the power he followed an isolationist policy or laissez faire that means uh, that country is not interested to maintain any foreign trade or foreign relations with other countries due to which they followed isolationist policy and this isolationist policy may be responsible for the outbreak of the great depression so roosevelt after coming to the power he brought some changes in its uh, ideology instead of uh, closed door policy he maintained open door policy that is popularly called as a new deal policy as a part of this new deal policy he introduced three r's uh, that is called as a relief recovery reform relief to the victims uh, who suffered due to of depression recovery recovery of the economy both agro and industry from the ill effects of this uh, depression and uh, reform bringing uh, economic and as well as monetary changes uh, in this uh, reform so relief recovery reform help usa it in overcoming this uh, problems so that is how roosevelt helped USA in overcoming this great depression so due to which USA in long run they emerged as superpower in economic point of view then afterwards let us see the rise of Hitler to power and we all know that one Hitler who worked as an ordinary soldier during World War 1 and he got hurted injured because of which he retired from military and after some time he got an idea to join into the politics of Germany. So let us see the recapitulate once the timeline of Hitler. So Hitler he born in 1889 in Austria and in 1914 Hitler joins German army. So in 1914 during World War I he got hurted and he retired from that one then later in 1918 World War ends. In 1919 Hitler joined German workers party as an ordinary person in a German workers party then slowly he grew his power. In 1921 Hitler becomes the chairman of the party workers party which is renamed Nationalist Socialist German Workers Party NSDAP later this party named as uh, Nazi Party 1921 in 1923 Hitler stages failed coup coup the attack or in simple we called as a coup coup is nothing but uh, it is a kind of plan plot uh, to occupy power illegally by dethroning existing ruler that is what we called as a coup or sometimes we call coup d attack but he failed in this coup because lack of uh, proper manpower so with this he was sentenced to jail so hitler was kept in jail and in 1924 he released from jail while he was in jail he wrote uh, a famous book that is called as a mean camp so in 1925 after coming from Jail. He published this famous book, Mean Camp. Mean Camp means uh, my views. In this Mean Camp, uh, <coughs> he wrote his personal experience and uh, ideologies of government. This Mean Camp later become a sort of Bible to the Nazis. Then in 1930, 
this nazi party become the second largest party in germany prior to this 1930 where he contested in the election he captured very nominal seats this nominal percentage of votes is not sufficient to form the government in 1930 that party emerged as second largest in riksdag riksdag the lower house of german parliament but later in 1932 general election this nazi party captured thumping majority where they are eligible to form the government so in 1933 a great uh, change has taken place in german history in 1933 hitler become chancellor so after becoming chancellor he tried to become total ruler of germany he was not satisfied with the chancellor post and he want to become a totalitarian totalitarian is nothing but uh, a total ruler of the country just like a chief dictator of the country so after coming to the power he introduced censorship uh, censorship is nothing but not allowing this press to publish any matter against to the government and also suppressed civil liberties civil liberties is nothing but uh, the freedom or liberties enjoyed by the ordinary people and passes the enabling act in march 1933 he forced hindenburg or uh, reichstag uh, to pass this enabling act this enabling act uh, makes hitler a powerful ruler or dictator in germany and later he rose to the power as indomitable power in germany as well as in entire european continent so in 1934 hitler merges both the post of chancellor and president that president post after the death of hindenburg so this is the glance story of how hitler came to power so hitler after coming to the power and he made so many aspects to establish his power just now we discussed how he reached power first on january 30 1933 he became chancellor of germany later in the same year march 23 march 23 and he became the chief dictator of hitler let us see once uh, what factors uh, favors hitler to rise to power so as we discussed earlier that uh, after kaiser william 2 then ruler of germany during the period of world war 1 after his abdication from the throne and a temporary government was established that is popularly called as an the weimar government weimar means uh, it is a place or a town located in germany in that place uh, a time being government was uh, established that's why it is popularly called as an the weimar government so this weimar government have some weaknesses so these weaknesses if you observe weimar government uh, is not democracy and open elections so that in sense means uh, they will go for democratic uh, and open elections and balance between rights and uh, national stability rights in sense means uh, the rights which we are enjoying fundamental rights uh, and a lack of national stability and uh, next one is the left left in sense means all the communist countries we call it as in left in the world so these left they are pro communist and influenced by the russian bolsheviks and they demanded for workers rights example um, stupor carist rebellion that is an a french word that is called as an spat fascist rebellion that is allowing the workers to rebel against the capitalist and the last one is uh, the right fascists right in sense means who are against the communist they are called as an right fascist or otherwise we called as a nazis in germany we called as a nazis in italy they are called as a fascist because mussolini was the founder of this fascism and they desired military rule they wanted strong dictatorial rule in germany and they also demanded the restoration of german power so this is how their their lapse political 
instability in this Weimar government. By taking this as an opportunity, Hitler got an opportunity to rose to the power. Not only this political, but economic problems also cropped up in Germany. That is called as a hyperinflation. Hyperinflation means more than uh, unbearable inflation. So Germany often did not have enough money to pay its uh, reparation. Already we discussed it in Treaty of Versailles. Germany was asked to pay huge war indemnity or what we called as a compensation because Germany alone made responsible for the outbreak of World War I due to which Germany was forced to pay huge war indemnity which caused a huge to the executor of Germany. Due to this, Germany become the most unpopular country. So, Germany government printed more money which is not sufficient to meet the needs of the people. Due to more circulation of money, it leads to hyperinflation. So, hyperinflation is also one of the cause for the outbreak. Due to of hyperinflation, some aftermath effects happen that is value of the German mark, mark that is the name of the currency collapsed and poor people suffered terribly. Savings and pensions of the middle class uh, were wiped out and we more government uh, lost the confidence and the support of the middle class. So during this period they are awaiting to give an opportunity to the new personality. But unfortunately another setback taken place in Germany in the form of uh, Great Depression. Up to 1928 uh, USA extended its financial support uh, to run its economy. But unfortunately, in 1929, the Great Depression taken place. Due to of this Great Depression, that uh, America is unable to extend its uh, financial support. As America failed to extend its uh, financial support, uh, then Germany suffered a lot. Already, they are facing problem with the ill effects of Treaty of Herzl's. Uh, and when USA discontinued its financial support uh, and Germany further deepened into the economic uh, aspects. To rebuild itself uh, after World War I, Germany took many loans uh, from America. In 1929, America wanted Germany to repay all its loans uh, immediately. Then what happened next? The German government went bankrupt. Bankrupt in sense means becoming a poor, total poor in economy point of view. Millions lost their jobs. The entire country went into the crisis of economic. So that is how the Great Depression helped this Hitler to come to the power. And the coalition government, that is Weimar government, is unable to tackle this economic fallout and finally so the political instability taken place and this political instability finally led to the emergence of uh, a great uh, dictator that is in the form of uh, Hitler. So that is how the Hitler came to power after overcoming all these kinds of political instabilities.